you know, TV acting is a tough business. Most actors who appear in a long running popular series are called successful actors. But what do you call an actor who's been in nine successful series? You call her Sharon Gless. I was so happy to see Sharon. I hadn't seen her in a couple of years. That as we talked, we talked about everything except the reason why we're having this conversation. She wrote a great new book called Apparently There Were Complaints. And it's all about her life. The stuff that she's talking about on the show. So if you want to know more, pick up a book. It's a good read. Oh, welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Stuart. It's nice to be here. What made you become an actress? Something I always dreamed about. Um, I wanted to be in the movies, you know, as a child. It was always about the movies, the movies. And I signed up for an, an, an acting class. And um, within a year, I was under contract to the biggest television studio in the world. Well, I, a question I wanted to ask you about that. Your grandfather was an attorney to some of the biggest people in Hollywood, Howard Hughes, Cecil B. DeMille, and the people that run Hollywood that you don't even know their names, but they, they run the right. show. Would your grandfather give you any good advice and did he give you any help in getting started? His advice was stay out of it. It's a filthy business. Did he, did that was his response. Help? But did um, he give you any help? Years later, and yes, he did. Uh, when I was 26, he had, it was a bad time in my life, and he had invited me to come to his ranch in Scottsdale. And anyway, while I was there, he went to bed early and left his new wife to talk with me. And she asked me, um, Sharon, you're 26 years old. You have nothing to show for your life. Oh, what do you want? What, what is it you want? I said, <laughs> I just went quiet. She said, just say it. Don't, don't think about whether it's possible or not. Just say it. And so for the first time, I said, I want to be an actress. And she said, well, I was under contract to MGM when I was your age. She said, I wasn't very good. So only last year. Um, I said, well, please don't tell Grandpa, Mary, as he disapproves of the business. And um, so the next morning, she said, your grandfather would like to see you. And she told him, see, <laughs> see, that's what happens. And so she said, your grandfather would like to see you. So I went into his room, he's sitting in bed, she said, that's ridiculous. I said, Grandpa, I knew that would be your response. That's why I asked Mary, please not to tell you. He said, I mean, it's ridiculous. You think I'd try to stop you. He said, so you want to be an actress? I said, yes, Grant. He said, so what are you going to do about it? I said, well, I'm going to take acting lessons. He said, how much are they? I mean, just, I said, <clears throat> for three months, it's $150. And Stuart, I had nothing. I had nothing. He said, okay, you've got $150. Now what? That was huge. Wow. That was. Yeah. Because said, it was more than $150. He was giving you his support. Yes. And encouraging you. Yes. So he said, now you've got the $150. Now what are you going to do about it? And I said, well, now I, I, I need to audition for this class. And, and then he said, what are you going to do until you become an actress? I said, well, I'm going to get another job, I'm secretary. He said, fine, you want to go home? I'd just gotten there. I'd gotten there just the night before, and I said I'd stay for two weeks. You know, I didn't want to be rude. He said, I said, Grandpa, I came to visit with you. He said, I know, you want to go home? And Stuart, my, my grandfather was a thoroughbred reader, a thoroughbred racer. And... I knew he knew when a filly was ready to run. And I think that's why he pushed me. You want to go home? So I said, well, yes, Grandpa. He said, fine, have Mary get you a ticket tonight. <laughs> and I think with that support from him, not just the financial, although 150 was a tremendous amount of money. Um, as I flew over Los Angeles, I looked out of the plane window and I, 
as I was leaving Arizona and about to land in LA, I looked out the window and I knew I would not fail. And I don't know why I thought that. I just knew. I was not young. I was 26. I wasn't you know, a great looker, great body. I didn't have any of those things that I thought you have to have to make it in Hollywood. Um, but I knew I wouldn't fail. And when I got off the plane, I anyway, I auditioned for this class. I went to the acting school. I, I got a job, not a job, paying job. I did a little play um, with some people in my acting class. We didn't charge anybody. It only ran two nights. Mm -hmm. Folding chairs, you know. Um, and somebody in the audience was from Universal Studios. And they saw me. Wow. And they called me at my office. And introduced me to the head of talent at Universal. And she signed me that day. And that's how it started. I was there 10 years. It, um, I was the last contract player in the history of Hollywood. It's the last one that left the lot. And Universal was the last studio to have them. So that made me the last contract player in the history of Hollywood. But when I left the studio, I went to play Christine Cagney. And that, was, that formed the rest of my career. Well, what, what brought my attention to you was that role and several others. You always play these very strong, but very likable ladies who each one of those characters, and my favorite is uh, Debbie Novotny. Each, <laughs> each one of those characters had integrity and, and stood up and weren't afraid of anybody. And, and I always admire that. And whenever you're in a production, I know it's going to be good because you know how to select your, your characters and how to play them. And it's always right on the money. Well, that's praise from Caesar. Thank you very, very much. It, going on to Cagney and Lacey, you did a series of movies for television, which were all acclaimed because you had quality in that, just like you had in the show. Now, my question is, was it really hard for you and Time Daly to get back into your characters and recreate the kind of chemistry that you had in the TV show? Very honestly, I had a very hard time getting back to Christine Cagney at that age and at my size. I didn't look like I did the six years I played her. It was now seven years later. I'd put on weight. I'd gotten married. My life I just wasn't as free as, I, as it was when I initially played Cagney. Also, Barney um, made Cagney be married. And I was just appalled. Appalled. I said, you can't do that with that character. <laughs> and, and, I mean, I, all of a sudden I thought, I don't know who she is. And it, it got to be a real sore point for Barney. But how, did, how did it all coalesce so when it was on camera, it didn't look like what you were just describing? Because I'm an actress and I have to do the job. You know? <laughs> paying, me to, paying me to play a part, so I show up and I play it. But I did not believe she should ever be married. Barney finally said, I didn't say she'd stay married. She should never have been. Um, and also, I didn't look like I did when I played Kate. And um, some critics made fun, especially of my, of my size. Um, it seems to be that Burnett gets away with a lot. The blonde doesn't get away with it. <laughs> I write about it in my book, because uh, my, my grandmother had a really hard time with me being heavy. It's a teenager, and it... it uh, it's very, it's emotionally destructive. I, I understand she wanted the best for me and she thought me going around at 170 pounds as a young teenager just, you know, wouldn't offer mm -hmm. me the future she had hoped. Um, I understand, but it's still damaging. Anyway, I want to get back to Cagney and Lacey and to the line that you uttered, the last line in the show, my name is Christine and I'm an alcoholic. How right. did you, at that moment, when you were coming out, so to speak, how did you, at that moment, relate to it as Sharon Gless? It was more than just uh, saying a line in, in a play. It, was, it had to be personal. The truth, the yeah. absolute truth. I was playing a character. I knew she was the adult child of an alcoholic. I thought the, I thought the 
subject matter should be addressed. But did I know that Sharon was an alcoholic? No, I did not. It wasn't until a year later that I was encouraged. I put quotes around that one. Encouraged to go to rehab. Um, and it was while I was in rehab that I had to address or face my own demons. But when I first said, my name is Christine and I'm an alcoholic, I had no idea what I was. I was playing a role. Well, when, when you discovered that you were really talking about yourself and the, the world didn't know it, what was the impact on Sharon Gless to, to, to do that? Because this took a lot of courage. And, I know, didn't like I, it. I didn't like it. I was accused of being an alcoholic about a year later by my agent. I didn't like it. I didn't believe it. Um, there was so much other stuff going on in my life that I was just happy to get out of town. So I said, fine, um, uh, fine, I'll go. But it took me a long time while in Hazleton, which is considered the Harvard of the rehabs in America. I couldn't say the words, my name is Sharon and I'm an alcoholic, wouldn't say Sharon for a long, long time. I, 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 what, I, what, what point did you get up the courage to say Sharon? Barney came to visit and I thought there's so much pressure on me, all right. So he and I went for a walk and they were keeping me hidden at Hazleton because at that time I was famous and it's a very private place and the press had gotten hold of it so they kept me hidden. So Barney and I went on this walk across the campus and I thought, well, I'll try it out on him, see how it goes. So I said, okay, you stand over there. Don't say anything. I'm just gonna try something out on you. I said, okay. So I said, my name is Sharon. I'm an alcoholic. And what was Barney's reaction? I said, I know. And what was your reaction to that? You do! How did you know? <laughs> I swear to God, I think that was my reaction. What do you mean you know? Um, but he said it very sweetly and very soft. I said, well, I'm having a hard time with this. And so anyway, I wrote, every night in Hazleton, you have to write about your feelings every night and give it to your counselor under her door every night. So I wrote in it that I had said that to Barney. She called me in. She said, you want to talk about it now? They waited all those weeks for me to say. But it was not easy. My first AA meeting, they Hazelman sends you out just before you go home. Seven weeks later, I'm going to go home. My counselor said, Sharon, it's the program, the program. I said, okay, so anyway, I stopped drinking for 15 years. Then I started again. Anyway, now I'm seven. Now I'm seven. Eight years seven. Now I've got a, a make believe question. Okay. You mentioned that you would like to do one more series. I really Let's pretend you're the series runner and you can do anything you want on your series, what would it look like? All I know is I wouldn't have to look my best. How can you not? Does that you make sense? Do. No, because you always look your best. Because I'm in an age now where, I, you know, I don't want that to be required. I don't want that to be the requirement. Mm -hmm. That I look good in my clothes or that I don't age. I have aged. I don't look great in my clothes. I look like women my age look. Um, Barney had a great idea. It should be fun. Um, whatever happened to Nancy Drew? Because I do have a background of crime. I mean, you know, of crime, of, of solving crime. Uh, and I think she'd be an alcoholic. I think she'd be a mess. I think she'd live on a houseboat somewhere. That's all she could afford. But she still can't stop nosing in other people's stuff. 
That's that sounds like a great pitch. I think so. And she's physically a mess. <laughs> that would be my dream. And if you happen when you're writing this, can find a part for a, a small man with a handlebar mustache. I still have my cell card. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, I want to. <laughs> I want to say thank you for joining me today. I really enjoyed it. Oh, Stuart, thank you. You're a wonderful host. You made it easy.